The Roots of Black Lies Matter. So am I black, and does that matter? I asked myself this more than a decade before the Black Lives Matter was a movement. Though it certainly occurred during middle school, I cannot clearly recall the first time my blackness became a question. A child of African diplomats, I attended a public school in one of the suburbs of the Washington, D.C. area. As expected of the location and occupations it attracted, the school was full of other children with international backgrounds. I'd say almost half were either first-generation Americans, if not foreigners by citizenry, or in the very least, they had at least one parent that was a first-generation American. No matter our familial backgrounds, we were Bethesdians. In addition to that, we were Panthers, then Vikings, classmates, competitors, fans, and teammates, amongst other things. I may not clearly recall our first meeting exactly, but on that first day that I arrived in middle school, the administration assigned me a friend to show me around. Well, at that point we were not yet friends, but if I remember correctly, we had all but one of the seven classes together, and we quickly became friends. Now, I didn't specifically take note of this at the time, or in memory, until recalling it for this purpose, but the friend in question is black. I mean, technically an African American, but I haven't asked him if he identifies himself as black, and previously have discussed, and will continue to, that there seems to be quite a distinction between the terms black, African American, and African. I'm almost certain that almost all in Black Lives Matter, all people involved with Black Lives Matter, all supporters of Black Lives Matter, would consider him black. So I'm not saying it never came up, but if it did, I cannot recall a specific conversation or situation in which it came up. So I'll say it wasn't exactly worth noting. But now I'm sitting here wondering if the school suggested he show me around because I was from Africa and he was one of the few quote unquote black students in the school. If he is black, why didn't it matter to me? Black Lives Matter is now international. I'd say global, but have not heard of any activities in Asia, likely due to there hardly being any black people to protest anything. The Middle East, not only due to the low numbers of black people, but add to that they would probably not care at all if anybody did protest, or in Africa, which the vast majority of the population is of the same quote-unquote race, so who exactly would one race protest against? And to that, I have a couple of videos where we're discussing the actual tribe kind of situation. So from the outside, it may seem like one tribe, but if you're using black as skin color to divide it, it's kind of difficult to do that in a place where it's predominantly black. But then you'd think that, but it also happens in inner city areas where it is predominantly black. Okay, but back to the topic at hand. At the time that I initially wrote this post, there was public outcry over the shooting and subsequent deaths of Alton Jennings and Fernando Castile, two black males. The deaths were a few days apart and sparked protests in several cities across the United States. During one such protest in the state of Texas, a self-declared Black Lives Matter supporter shot 11 police officers, killing five. The protest continued nonetheless. I took some time to think through it, let some more information come out and try to realize where, when, how, and why this occurs. Why was it an issue? Why this matters? If I am black, should it matter? So the growth in technology has been described as exponential. The instantly updating nature of the information age is ever more evident when tragic incidents are involved. The atmosphere around the three deadly situations mentioned were an instructive example of this truth. All this access to information provides a temptation, if not an outright invitation, to jump to conclusions, fabricate, exaggerate, and or fall into dismay. I do not want to fall into any of these typical reactions to situations such as the ones that occurred during a week like that one. So back around that time while I was walking in Manhattan on the evening of 7th July 2016, I saw a line of police vehicles stopped along an entire block of 6th Avenue. My laptop was getting fixed at the time and I had elected to cut back on my internet information intake, which was and still is where I get most of my news. 
Unable to keep completely out of the loop, I used my still occasionally absurd to think of what is actually a smartphone and was aware of the shootings and subsequent deaths of Philando Castile on the 6th of July that was preceded by that of Alton Sterling a day before on the 5th. I'd read some of the initial reports, seen a few images, and heard that they were both recorded. That of Castile having been partially live-streamed. As I walked, my main thoughts were still on getting back to the apartment and prepping for a dinner guest I was expecting. I wondered in passing who the police may be escorting or protecting. As I had uncharacteristically not put the headphones back into my ears after having taken them out in the store, I took note of what must be a helicopter or more in a holding pattern overhead. This was due to how the distinct sound of the engine powering the blades was increasing as I walked instead of the usual approach and recession as they often fly over the city. I crossed Broadway and soon approached Fifth Avenue where I heard people walking up the street. This is why the police vehicles were blocks away. This is what the eyes in the sky were focused on. It was a Black Lives Matter protest. Having made the decision to cross through, a mix of emotions began to well up as I walked up to the steadily moving mix of people and not quite moving vehicles. I agree with protests or not, there is a certain energy about collective action. The chance of Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter had begun and as I got to the other side, I put in my headphones and pressed play. I could hear the chance of this is what democracy looks like begin and be carried along. I paused the playback and shook my head to myself, kind of admonishing my attempt to block this out. Think about it, I thought to myself. This is something you need to figure out. A few blocks later, I was inside of my apartment, and thoughts of this march were still inside my head. Since that was not what I thought democracy looks like, why did they? We could not both be right. We could both be wrong, however. What did democracy mean that led them to walk up the street while I was walking across it? I was at the time, have been since, and still am searching for the root of that matter. The sentiments expressed by those in the crowd and in many similar protests, demonstrations, and riots since could likely be part of what had driven me to spend an amount of time searching for my so-called blackness. My roots. Did this all begin in middle school when I first met my friend? You may think that the school assigned him to me since they were under the assumption that we would bond over our shared blackness that something about similar skin color would include some higher compatibility. If you consider it to be a good judgment call on their part, and not in the least somewhat negatively racist, but actually a policy that they and other institutions should adopt, I would assume that you also agree with much of the Black Lives Matter movement's support of segregation, based on the claims that black people somehow intrinsically can relate to other black people in ways that non-black people cannot. Were they not in the streets protesting because what happened to those black people was somewhat indicative, relatable, or should matter more to all people that are black or care for their unique experience? Some of the things I remember the most about their early years of friendship with my guide were going over to his house and having the great video games there. And not only for their video games, but there was actually a television in his room and not just the television and the games, but also a phone, a home phone with his own phone line that really blew my mind at that time. And my friend also helped me in school, and the grandma used to give us these really tasty cookies. And we shared an interest in sports, and they introduced me to many friends and showed me around their neighborhood and helped me eventually consider it my neighborhood. We kind of lived walking distance away from the school and kind of would just hang out and spend a lot of time together. So before writing this, I'd always thought of them as a friend instead of a black friend. And I guess I can thank Black Lives Matter for now having that kind of qualification to think of them as. Yeah, so that's it for now. Uh, thanks for listening. I'm going to try to keep this series in the initial structure that I wrote it in, in the initial parts. And then I'll expand on it as I go and kind of add things because... As I wrote this a while ago, some things have changed both in how I look at the world and also the Black Lives Matter movement has grown and continued and continues to evolve and change. Well, I don't want to say evolve. We'll see if it is actually evolving or if it's just more of the same kind of going on. Because I don't necessarily think it's that unique or new of a movement. It's probably just something that's existed but now is occurring kind of in a different form.
It's not the most simple of topics, as you can imagine, but I really think it's worth kind of delving deeper into this topic and breaking it apart and paying attention to what exactly is going on so I can better explain my thought process in trying to discover what exactly Black Lives Matter means to me and what I perceive their intentions to be and what its effects have, are, and will be as time continues. At the time that I wrote this, the United States of America was in the midst of an unprecedented presidential campaign, that of Donald J. Trump, and was also just coming to terms that the other candidate, Hillary Clinton, was not going to face any charges for the several scandals she was being suspected and reportedly attached to her and people related to her campaign. So it was also a long 4th of July weekend, which is the Independence Day of the United States of America, where the country gets even more patriotic than it normally is. It's this marca, marca, marca at that time. And interestingly enough, as I wrote that initial part, I was also about to travel back to Kenya. And that's the same thing that's happening right now, is I'm about to head back to Kenya at the end of this week. And as I mentioned in that post, I shall continue this series even during the travel. But right now the presidency of Donald J. Trump has been on for months and Black Lives Matter continues. Actually, I just found out that Hillary Clinton is considering, is open to contesting the presidency. Even after there was, there was during one of the debates, Donald Trump was asked if he'd accept the results of the presidency and he'd said something like, paraphrasing, he'd said, depends on what happens, I'll wait and see, because there could be some things off about it. And then Hillary Clinton had let out a tweet and a lot of other media sources were saying, oh, Donald Trump says he will not accept the results of the election. That's challenging democracy. That's challenging the institution of the nation. And now to find out that after Hillary Clinton lost, she's claiming she won the popular vote, but you win by electoral college. But she claims that and now she's open to contesting this. So you see that flip flop. But something that's happening in Kenya right now, they actually went had undergone, they have undergone a contested election. The election, the presidential election happened, there's found to be some irregularities, and then the Supreme Court of Kenya overturned the election and said in 60 days, they have to have another election, another vote. So as I specified before and shall again, I'm under no illusion that Black Lives Matter has to care for Africans, be they of similar skin pigmentation or not. I don't expect them to, nor do I think it would be practical or even positive if Black Lives Matter spread to Africa and started going to Kenya and dealing with issues there. So I shall expand later on that thought, but I just thought it was worth mentioning just seeing the kind of coincidences of similar things happening at that time, similar things happening here, just different things happen for the same reasons. That's one of the ongoing themes of uh, my channel and a lot of the things I observe about the world. So back to this video. On the title of this video, when I initially wrote it, I used a voice-to-text function on my phone, and it somehow picked up lives as lies, and I decided to keep it because it's fitting to the issue at hand in several ways. First, it shows how my accent, depending on who I'm speaking to, where I am, and what I'm reading, kind of changes in an effort to be better understood. And it also kind of shows how I don't necessarily feel that I identify or fit into whatever package people mean when they say black. Second, sometimes what somebody says is not always what is intended and or heard. And even accounting for the increased access to information that technology brings, this does not necessarily mean that you have an increased access to accurate information. Third and most importantly, this is an issue that cannot afford to be based on falsehoods or involved in the spreading of falsehoods. If white lies can be referred to as lies that can be told with little or no consequence, then I think any lies involved in issues this serious can be referred to as black lies. Lives are at stake. Lives have been lost. Lives are being lost. And before this is said and done, I think more lives will be lost by the continued spread of misinformation when dealing with this issue. As I continue this series, I hope you can see some results in my thought process and also share some of yours. I encourage and welcome you to engage me and others in this conversation, or in the very least, question what exactly people mean when they say Black Lives Matter. 
Now you can do that by just talking to people in your life, journaling about this, recording yourself, writing comments in here, but I don't think this topic or issue will be served by people ignoring it or pretending nothing is happening. Something is happening and this is my attempt to try and find out exactly what part I play into it, how I can affect the issue, how it affects me, and possibly how I can spread some understanding on that issue or maybe translate some things to somebody else. I think one good challenge to do is if there's an issue that you don't understand or you think you understand, try to think of how you'd explain it to somebody who doesn't know any of the main issues or topics or characters or subjects in that situation. So that's it for this first part and I'll try to release these ones on regular. I'll try to get these out and then of course I shall continue this series and expand on what I initially wrote. So that's it for now. Like, share, and subscribe. And um, till next video, this is Silas. Goodbye.